lead off part first? Yes, you can go ahead from here, Pastor. Yep. Yeah, uh, so we, we've got a, a wonderful team in place as we did last year as well uh, to help us as a church to have a corporate fast. And that's the, 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 the plan for this evening and for all of our uh, Thursday nights in the uh, month of August that we're going to go into fasting uh, and, and, and focus our attention on, on three things, why we're fasting, uh, when we're fasting, and how we're going to fast. Uh, so that we have as much clarity as we can get. And we're going to be teaching on fasting uh, uh, throughout the month of, of August on Thursday nights. Uh, so we invite you to come and, and be with us, invite some friends uh, to learn about fasting. Uh, it's uh, it's, a, it's a, a discipline, a spiritual discipline uh, that many of us uh, weren't raised with. Some of us were, and we want to pass on the knowledge that we have from uh, our, uh, our histories, our background in the Lord. Uh, so that we can be a blessing to each other. So first question, why are we fasting? Uh, we're fasting so that we can focus our attention on winning more souls for Jesus. Uh, every one of us struggles, uh, all of us, myself included, we struggle with witnessing. We struggle with when to share our faith and when not to share our faith. Uh, and uh, one of the things that Jesus talked about in, in dealing with major uh, adversarial confrontations and situations uh, is to pray and fast. Uh, and, and we want to do that. We want to focus our attention on evangelism and on winning souls for the Lord. Uh, and that's the goal uh, of our church. It's our mission statement uh, to make disciples for Jesus Christ. And our theme for this year in particular is Acts 1-8, uh, that the Holy Spirit will come upon us and that we will be witnesses for the Lord all over the world. Uh, so we want to encourage why we're fasting. We want to improve our witnessing. So we want to be praying and fasting and, and focusing our attention on uh, that the Lord may, may lead us and show us how we can be better uh, at being witnesses for him in our lives. Uh, when are we going to fast? We're going to start uh, identical to last year, the day after Labor Day, uh, Tuesday, September the 3rd, and we will be fasting through Saturday, October the 12th. And the kind of fast we're doing is a, a time slotted fast uh, from eight o'clock in the morning, which is when our prayer line starts until 6.30 in the evening, which on Wednesday nights, that's our uh, get in the word dinner time that we meet for dinner and we would be breaking our fast then. So you may eat solid food prior to 8 a.m. and after 6.30 p.m. But in between 8 a.m. and 6.30, that's the discipline part. No solid food, liquids only. Uh, and we wanna encourage you all to join with us as you're able. Uh, if you are unable because of medical reasons, then there are other things that you can do uh, to fast and our team will be teaching about things like that and writing things like that for you to have more knowledge about that uh zion's corporate fast how are we fasting it's a corporate fast uh so you may drink water throughout the, the week throughout the day uh from 8 to 6 30 uh and then we encourage you all to come to the prayer line uh every every thursday night but really every day and every night uh join us every morning at 8 a.m and every evening at 7 p.m uh to get in the word to hear the word of god more uh, God's been blessing our church. We have so many talented and knowledgeable people in the congregation, ministers and deacons, uh, deaconess, so many people uh, who have uh, wisdom to share, uh, knowledge to impart, and we want to avail ourselves of that on the prayer line. Uh, so that's that's the introduction to our fast. Uh, we start again on September 3rd. We go through October the 12th, and it's a daytime fast from 8 a.m. until 6.30, from prayer line to prayer line. Uh, and join with us liquids only during that time, uh, solid foods after those hours or before those hours, all right? Okay, Minister Tracy Lynn, you want to take, and Mr. Tracy Lynn is chairing uh, our fasting committee for the ministers, and uh, she's going to go ahead and take over at this time. All right. Thank you so much, Pastor, for kicking us off with this year's fast. Um, I'm going ahead and open us in prayer uh, before we um, move on to our next segment of this fasting topic. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for another day that you have blessed us with. Thank you for the strength that you've given us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the example that we have in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who also fasted. We pray, God, that um, you will be pleased with this, that you will guide us with this, that you will bless us and give us the desires of our heart as it pleases you. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Bless the teaching, O oh Lord. Um, let us all get the insight that we need from it. And um, we pray that you would just be with us. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Amen. 
Amen. All right. So um, we I'm really excited to be here on behalf of the fasting committee. We um, have um, a, a schedule lined up for the prayer line on Thursdays. And so what we want to begin with is just as we did last year, we had a focused scripture. So this year we have a corporate fast scripture all again in alignment with um, Acts 1-8 as well. So our, our focus scripture this year is coming out of the book of Matthew 4, verses 1 and 2. And this scripture will be shared at the beginning of every um, prayer line in the month of August on Thursdays. It says, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward, he was hungry. Amen. The end of the reading of, of God's holy and inerrant word. So let that scripture be in the back of your mind. Um, just knowing that Jesus also fasted for 40 days, um, especially before beginning his ministry here. So um, what we have tonight we are going to be um, teaching on fasting. And every Thursday, there will be an associate minister that will be teaching on fasting to help all of us in our preparation for the fast in September, as Pastor said. Tonight, we have Reverend Gwen Kane, who will be touching on the topic of why you should fast and the type of fast. So after Reverend Gwen Kane, we'll have a, a moment or two for a few questions uh, that you may have. So I'm going to pass it off here to Reverend Gwen Kane. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. My assignment, as you heard, is to go over why you should fast, how to fast safely, and types of fast. The scripture reference that I have is Matthew 6, verse 16 through 18. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash, their, wash your face, that thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, and that thy appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret, and the father, which is in secret, shall reward thee openly. That was Matthew 6, 16 through 18. So we know that fasting is a biblical way to truly humble yourself in the sight of God. And we find that in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. We all know this verse. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, there are several reasons why Christians fast. So for the sake of time, I'm only going to be going over a few, but here are some of the reasons why we fast. Nearness to God, spiritual freedom, guidance, waiting for Jesus' return, a healthy body, to humble oneself in the sight of God, to reveal one's true spiritual condition, uh, to result in broken, brokenness, repentance, and a transformed life, to encourage the Holy Spirit to quicken the word of God in one's heart and make his truth more meaningful. But we know that there are some misconceptions, so let's go over some misconceptions. First, let's get this clear because it can be a misconception among the Christian church. Fasting will not atone you of your sin. 
Only repentance and the blood of Jesus can atone you for your sin. We need to praise God for his cleansing power. However, repentance is a crucial step in our nearness to God. So repentance can be a huge benefit before we even start any fast. Also, you know we like to use our Google. So we'll Google search. And you may find that many people will fast in order to lose weight. This is not a biblical idea. idea. And while weight loss may be an effect of fasting, it is never the reason for a Christian to fast. We fast to honor the Lord and to glorify him in our mind, our body, and spirit. So some of the spiritual reasons to fast, one, nearness to God. We want to be near to God. Two, spiritual freedom. And Isaiah 58, 6 tells us, is not this the fast that I chose to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the, the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke? Spiritually speaking, fasting is extremely benefit, beneficial. How can fasting affect your spiritual life? Well, it brings you closer to God's presence. When you are able to press into the Lord without food, you will become more sensitive to his spirit without the distractions of your desires. Also in scripture, we see that God brings us spiritual freedom through fasting. This is yet another reason to fast. Joel 2, 12 states, Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with your, all your heart with fasting and weeping and with mourning and rent your hearts and not your garments. Here we see how the Lord declares to the nation of Israel that fasting, in fact, is a tool to bring us closer to God. How can this affect our spiritual lives exactly? Well, the closer we are to God, the closer we are to his spirit. We see throughout scripture that being filled with the spirit equates to being close to God. It is even stated in Luke chapter one that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit and he is near to God. In this scripture verse, we also see that while fasting, we are to render our hearts unto the Lord. When we give our hearts to him, we grow in relationship with him, which we ultimately bring us nearer to God. This verse also shows how we can move closer to God through fasting because God is calling the people of Israel to repent through this fast. In our repentance, God forgives our sins Therefore, we no longer have sin in between us and God any longer, causing closeness to arise in our bond to him. Isaiah 58, 6 tells us, Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Many people are encouraged by this, by this verse. This chapter is about fasting, and this verse specifically highlights the Lord's fast. It is encouraging to know that a true fast is one that will loose bonds of wickedness and of a heavy yoke. It shows that fasting is so that men and women will be free from the oppression of this world and of sin. It also shows that God desires to break the heavy yoke keeping us from him. That was Isaiah 58 verse 6. When a reader truly dissects this passage, they will find what God means through his words, that to loose the bonds of wickedness 
means a vast variety of freedom. This freedom includes freedom from the bondage of a depraved judgment, meaning sin. We also receive freedom from the bondage that men and women are held under, the bondage of what the world deserves, desires of us and from what we feel we must strive for. God wants us to know that we are not held under human obligation, but to his freedom through following him. People trapped in bondage will fast with this verse in mind. There are many testimonies of these people trapped in sin and they find freedom from their fast. This is because God is making good on his promise that, that a true spiritual fast will bring freedom to men and women. So the main idea is while fasting may seem nearly impossible at times, whether it is because our schedule, our home life, our work life, or even our self-discipline, we can see that it is very beneficial spiritually, making excuses not to fast, only hindering our spiritual lives. There is nothing more rewarding than deepening our spiritual walk because we are made to have spiritual intimacy with God. So when we take the time to fast, we gain freedom, spiritual maturity, and intimacy with God and his Holy Spirit. Now, how can we fast safely? First of all, we, can, we have to consult your doctor to make sure that you are in good health. Persons with medical conditions should never fast without professional supervision. Prepare yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually. Read about fasting in the Bible, books, or online sources to learn from other experiences and benefits. Determine your motives, your objective, and commitment for fasting and declare your intentions to God and yourself. Find a fasting partner if possible to support and encourage each other. Approach your fast with a positive attitude of faith and expect God to bless you. Avoid overeating before fasting and eat healthy foods that will sustain you longer. Cut back on activity and exercise and take it easy on yourself during the fast. One thing I found encouraging was that if you write down what you eat, how you feel, and what your objective is before, during, and after the fast, it will track your progress and keep you focused. Remember, start slowly, fast for maybe one meal a day, just to get you ready, uh, maybe one day a week or once a month. This is before we even start our corporate fast. This helped build our spiritual muscles. Weaning yourself off caffeine, and that's a problem for me. Weaning yourself off caffeine and sugar products can ease your initial hunger or discomfort and end your fast gradually. How long and what type of fast is right for you? Fasting is about the condition of the heart. And again, in Joel 2, verse 12, yet even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rent your hearts and not your garments. There are multiple types of fast. The choice is between you and God. We have the Daniel fast, where you eat no meat, no sweets, no bread, drink water, and eat fruit and vegetables. A selective fast, give up a particular type of food or activity. Example, watching TV or social media. A full fast, drink only liquids. This is the type selected for our corporate fast. There are circumstances that require you to eat solid foods yeah. during the fast period. Please use wisdom. You may want to consider one of the options. There should be available a fast option sheet. 
If you forget and eat or watch something, pray and get back on track. Be committed for the duration of the fast. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Cain, for that teaching and that we're really, really blessed to, um, to be here at Zion where we prepare, we take the time to prepare before the fast. So that is a blessing. All right. So you've heard about why, why we should fast and types of fast. Now we're going to move into our Q&A segment uh, where we can uh, respond to a few of your questions. I do want to mention that um, sometimes we get the frequently asked questions about the, having a specific health condition or taking certain meds and fasting around those. And I just want to remind you of what Pastor had mentioned earlier and also what Reverend Kane mentioned is uh, be sure to consult your doctor, in it, especially in those kind of matters. We also have a frequently asked question about taking vacation and um, or just not being able to fully participate. And for those, we we uh, advise that you pray on that and consider, you know, the alternate fast options that are there as well. So with that, I'm just going to open it up and invite you to ask questions. We have several of the ministers on the line that are willing to uh, assist with responding to your questions. I got a question uh, just mm -hmm. to ask about uh, mm -hmm. when we when we break the fast by uh, either by error or by weakness or whatever the case may be. Uh, you mentioned Reverend Kane uh, to get back on the on, get back on it. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit more? Uh, well, sometimes you may forget or life get in your way, and you just slip up and maybe eat something during that time that time period that you have uh, given us. Um, in my research and for myself, it's better to repent, ask God for forgiveness and get right back on track and continue on to the duration of the fast, you know, the full 40 days. You know, sometimes we do slip slip up and forget or or something like that. But uh yeah, don't don't beat yourself up, but please just ask the Lord to forgive you and get right back on and continue on so that we can work together as, you know, in with this corporate fast. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Pastor. Any other questions, concerns? And you can also put them in the chat as well. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. What is the Daniel fast? Her question is, what is the Daniel fast? Mm -hmm. uh, for my research, the Daniel fast is is very strict. Let me get it back up here. You eat no meat, no sweets, no bread. You only eat fruit and vegetables and drink water. That was from my research. Okay, because my aunt was telling me that she was on a Daniel fast. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. That's right out of scripture from Daniel chapter 1, uh, verse 12. Uh, Please test your servant for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. So that's, that's how Daniel fasted. Yeah, I love that story with Daniel um, and how that fast came to be. Thank you, Sister Kia. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Um, if there are no other questions, we can go ahead and conclude. 
but just invite you to be sure to come back next week on Thursday when we will be uh, picking up on our next topic, how to prepare yourself um, spiritually and physically. And that uh, proclaimer will be Jan Reverend Janet Ellison. Um, and we also want to uh, point out that there will be some materials available for you on Sunday um, that pretty much give you a, a general guide to this. It's going to tell you um, some of the information that you're hearing here, why are we fasting, when, and it's also going to summarize some of the tips for preparing um, during. So we, um, we will have that available hard copy and also online. So look out for that on Sunday. Um, so again, next week, we will be back here again, and it will be Reverend Janet Ellison who will pick up uh, where Gwen, Reverend Kane left off, and she's going to be talking about how to prepare yourself spiritually and physically for fast, for the fast. As we gear ourselves up uh, for Acts 1-8, strengthening ourselves to to be a witness to invite to to uh, win more souls for Christ and to invite others to church I'm going to ask Reverend Gwen Kane if you could please close us out in prayer okay Lord to Heavenly Father we just thank you for this opportunity of coming together to Heavenly Father and Lord even as we prepare ourselves now for this corporate fast, that we may even just try doing it one day, one just not have one meal for one day or once a week so that we can prepare ourselves for the corporate fast for when it starts. So, Lord, we thank you for these teachings, the Heavenly Father, that we can learn and grow closer to you. We thank you, Lord, for the fast that we choose. Yes, it's between ourselves and you, the Heavenly Father, but Lord, you will get the glory that we will be closer to you, that our spirits will, will be an, one with you, the Heavenly Father. So we're just thankful this tonight, the Heavenly Father, for this teaching. And Lord, even as we uh, close in it tonight, we ask that you continue just to bless each and every one on the line and those who couldn't be on the line that they will uh, receive these teaching and information that they need, that we can come together as one unit, serving and praising you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone have a blessed night. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks, Reverend Kane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. See you in the Good morning. Night. Good 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 night.